for me, a very good example of inclusiveness of Hong Kong society are the public spaces, especially the parks and the playground, because I work with inclusive design and I find that if I'm here, it's also to help Hong Kong find its, its balance. Okay, my name is Tulio Maximo, I'm from Brazil and I'm an assistant professor here in the School of Design at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. I came to Hong Kong in 2018 and I have very good first impression of Hong Kong uh, because I have so many diverse options of public transport, uh, all regular and all very good quality. So food-wise, in Hong Kong there is not many Brazil, Brazilian restaurants or Brazilian food, but I was very impressed that I could find uh, a quite famous pastry from my hometown, from my home state, everywhere in Hong Kong. It's, uh, it's called pão de queijo, which means cheese bread, and I find it in a lot of Japanese bakeries in Hong Kong. The food here is more diverse than in, than in Brazil, and more diverse especially than in my hometown, which, which I like it. Clothes-wise was quite impressive as well. I'm not used to see that many luxury shops and luxury brands everywhere, which for a designer is quite tempting. Yeah, my first challenge in Hong Kong was exactly about the fast pace of Hong Kong society. So it took me a few years actually to get used and, and find my, my balance. And also it became my mission because I work with inclusive design and I find that if I'm here it's also to help Hong Kong find its, its balance. And then I create this elective called Design Meets Disabilities. We teach students about inclusive design and assistive technology. So inclusive design focuses more on mainstream products and service uh, that considers the needs of people with disabilities and other um, populations that are often excluded from mainstream design like uh, minorities in, in low uh, economic income. So we designed some futures to help the, the children to adopt a better posture. So like this table tilt so they can bring just for different angles and bring the books closer to their eyes and also there's a, a light system different temperature different light uh, hour to exactly provide them a better better light so the seat can also be used on the floor or on the bed so we realize a lot of students were studying on the bed which often provide a not good posture so with simple mechanisms, we can disassemble the seat and put it on a, on a bed or on the floor, for example. And we also design assistive technology, which is more specific for people with disabilities. So it's a more niche market how to design for one capability or lack of capability, including cognition, hearing, vision, mobility, reach, and dexterity. So they will experience how it is to lack those capabilities using wearable simulators, some empathy tools. What's the difference between all these glasses? Okay, so this, for example, this glass, it will reduce the lack of vision acuity. Yeah. This I have adapted to also simulate the loss of the central, central vision, uh, vision. Yeah. and this one makes three of them so we can not only test mm -hmm. to see how does a, an age, aged person might feel yeah. like yeah. but also design so it can be uh, the service can be effectively used despite all the lack of capabilities yeah. so when we put on these glasses we feel like we are older people you might feel like older or you yeah. might feel like vision impaired so that makes our feel more empathy. Definitely. And for me, a very good example of inclusiveness of Hong Kong society are the public spaces, especially the parks and the playground. Those spaces are occupied by a large, diverse 
parts of society, from the children, from the elderly, from the domestic helpers, from the sports groups, from the office worker, and everybody occupying the same space in a very respectful way. And I find those spaces very well designed. Yes, yes, I, I use for different reasons. Uh, first, I did a bit of research here about people using walking aids, cooperate with students to redesign the fitness trail, and I also practice Kung Fu here oh, really? twice, a, twice a week, yes. So it's a good example of play equipment that can accommodate people with different capabilities or lack of capabilities. Also, a whole family can play. A whole family can play, so exactly. Um, so, for example, if a, pe a person shakes in the other side, then even uh, everyone can experience like the shaking of a boat, it's relaxing. It's <laughs> so the baby chair and also the wheelchair? The wheelchair can accommodate here, yeah. I live from many different Hong Kongs by arriving here in 2018. I think that Hong Kongers overall they are very respectful and worried about others worry about people's safety and very well engaged in their community, especially for people from some, some minorities and religious minorities. I often hear from them as well, that they feel safer in Hong Kong than sometimes in their original country. I feel safer here than in, than in my country too. And I feel more valued and respected sometimes as well. Exactly that Hong Kong now that uh, back to uh, drop mask and more open society that we do more of these face-to-face -face connections and I'm already feeling like um, a very positive energy around about people connecting and making connections working together and making Hong Kong a better place together now I can finally enjoy Hong Kong again and visit Asia different Asian countries which has always been my dream <laughs>